Shalom. Greetings and welcome to Jerusalem. Recently we celebrated Passover and I began to question, since Jesus was a Jew, should Christians be celebrating Passover? And then, since Jesus was a Jew, should Jews be celebrating the resurrection? Well, these are very important questions, and they're questions that I believe are actually answered in the Torah, especially in the third book of the Bible, in Leviticus. But we'll get to that in a minute. I want to ask now another question. What is the most often repeated phrase of Scripture? Well, you probably say John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in Him would not perish, but have eternal life. So let me ask it a different way. What is the most often repeated phrase or verse in Scripture? Well, you'll think for a moment and then you'll probably say, do not fear. That's a pretty good answer because actually that is used about 91 times in the New King James Version. But there's another one that you will know is used 119 times and that they might know is used another 56 times. So what is it that God wants everyone to know? He wants everyone to know that He is God. You see, redemption, salvation, creation is all about God filling the earth with the knowledge of His glory. And that word knowledge comes from the Hebrew root, yudah, which means a knowledge that comes from intimacy, as a husband knowing his wife. So everything that God does goes to the single mission of Him filling the earth with the knowledge of His glory. And He promises that one day that will happen. And in that day, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Yeshua is Lord. In other words, one day, when the earth is filled with the knowledge of God's glory, there will be worship in the heavens, on the earth, under the earth, in the seas, everything that has breath will praise the Lord. Now God's strategy was to create a kingdom, a kingdom of priests who would know Him, love Him, trust Him, and worship Him. To do that, He started with a man, Abraham. From Abraham came son Isaac, a family. Abraham and Isaac. And from Isaac came Jacob, who would ultimately be a nation. Jacob had 12 sons, and those 12 sons would become the nation of Israel. Now, Israel's purpose we see in Isaiah 43. You've heard it say that Israel, the Jewish people, are God's chosen people. So you need to ask chosen for what? So let's turn to Isaiah 43 and let's start with verse 10. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved, and I have proclaimed. There was no foreign God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Verse 15, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, and your king. And now let's go to verse 21. This people that I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. So Israel was created as a nation to show the world who God is, his character, his, his holiness, his love, his justice, his strength, 
what it meant to be a kingdom of God's people. What did God expect of him, of them? Yes, Israel was and remains chosen to be God's witnesses. Why? Because he loves the Gentiles so much. So we started, God started with a man, Abraham, a family, Isaac, a nation, Israel, and from Israel would come the Messiah of the world, Jesus, and through Jesus would come the kingdom, the kingdom of the people of God made up of Jews and Gentiles all over the world, from every language, every tribe, men and women, old and young, everyone who knew God and loved God and would trust God and would come into the kingdom through God's grace, through faith in Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Now let's get to this, the question at hand, the feasts. Now every nation, every family, every person has certain memorials, have certain holidays, so they help identify you. For instance, you have a birthday. You probably celebrate your birthday every year. Your family has anniversaries and your nation. Your nation probably has a Memorial Day to remember the soldiers who fell trying to bring you independence. And therefore you have an Independence Day. Very often these are rites of passage. Well, for the, the same reasons, God gave Israel certain feasts. So remember, I said in the beginning, the question of whether Christians should celebrate the feasts would be found in scripture, in the book of Leviticus. So let's turn to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. Verse 4, these are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. God gave Israel certain feasts that would come at appointed times to remember, to remember who God is and what he did in the past. They were like anchors of the community. They were, they were anchors of their identity because when they remembered the past, they could rest in their present because God was the same and is the same yesterday, today, and he will be tomorrow. So as we remember who God is and what he did in the past, we can rest in the present, knowing that God's got everything in control, and we can rejoice in our tomorrows. Remember, rest, and rejoice. But there's another very important R, and that's recognize. God gave Israel, and through Israel, the entire kingdom, the holidays to recognize his plan of redemption and salvation through Jesus the Messiah. Every single one of the feasts of the Lord were to point to Jesus or now to remember and to celebrate Jesus. So we get back to our question. Should Christians celebrate the feasts? No. Can Christians celebrate the feasts? Well, I suggest that they're the feasts of the Lord. And if you remember, if you are a member of the kingdom by grace through faith, absolutely, as long as you're celebrating Jesus. So I suggest, Christian, that you embrace the feast of the Lord, you adapt the feast of the Lord, and you adopt the feast of the Lord. Now go and celebrate Jesus and fill the earth with the knowledge of his glory. Shalom from Jerusalem.